Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to the Canis Major Video Deal blog. I'm very excited to introduce a, a series for our next few weeks where we're going to be uh, doing evaluation on apartments and take a look at how to evaluate uh, deals, how to evaluate leads. Our presenter today is John Leindecker, who's going to be taking us through apartment lead evaluation process part one. So John, are you on the line? Ready to go? Yes, I am. Thank you, Phil. All right. All right. Take it away. We'll be studying. Um, I'll be doing a deep dive today in the apartment lead evaluation process to determine if the lead's a viable deal or not. Uh, this is one of the many critical skills that a deal sponsor needs to possess. So a little bit about me. Um, throughout my career, I've been a recovery coach, a retail manager, a project manager, a data analyst, and a prior business owner. Um, I've been in real estate since uh, 2013. Uh, Buddy Henderson's my partner, and uh, we do rehabs. Uh, we do development in inner city Austin. Uh, we do a lot of infilling, uh, subject twos, wholesale deals, rentals, and uh, also our uh, flip properties. I've worked with Phil and Chenoa Grove since 2015, and I've been an acquisition specialist since July 2017. All right, this is an overview of the entire underwriting process for acquiring apartment complexes. A three-part series of the apartment underwriting process will take place over the next three, week, uh, three weeks. Until day, today, I'll deep dive into part one. Next week, David Teo, part two. And the following week after that, Buddy Henderson will talk on part three. And part one of the underwriting process will consist of the uh, offering memorandum if a broker is involved and the T12 P&L, which is called the trailing 12 months or the last 12 months of the income and expenses profit and loss statement of the apartment complex. Uh, we'll do a quick analysis test to determine whether or not an on-site visit is warranted. And we'll do an on-site visit, perform an estimated cost of capital repair, which is also uh, for single family people, rehab, and re repositioning of the units. We'll also collect data for potential and repositioning cost information by visiting the comparables. In part two next week, David Teal will discuss the use of the data collected from the on-site visit and the comparable visits from part one Using that information, he will develop a five-year pro forma model, clearly define assumptions made within that pro forma model, and determine the offer box price based off the pro forma and submit a letter of intent, also called an LOI, to the seller or the broker. In part three, Buddy Henderson will be covering, once the um, letter of intent and the contract is accepted, Buddy will be doing a deep dive into carrying out the on-site due diligence by checking 100% of the units, verifying all the financials and all the assumptions that were made during the pro forma model. So now we're diving into part one of the apartment lead evaluation process. I'm going to go over some items needed to analyze a property. Right, if a broker's involved, the broker should provide an offering memorandum, which in general provides a broker's marketing packet, a quantity of, of units, the different sizes and the various types of units, the broker's research of the market, and the broker's point of view, and what the new buyer could do um, with the property. Also, we'll need the uh, past 12 months of the, act of the actual operating income and expenses, which is called the T12 P&L, the current rent and roll, which should state the current rent rates, length of tenant contracts and vacancies, right? The, and we'll also, uh, another useful item to use is the uh, Cold Star Comps Report, which is a system like MLS, which provides sales comparables, rents, vacancy rates, cap rates, and other marketing data, such as businesses that are around an apartment complex, the average income, yearly income rates of people that live in the area around the apartment complex, and employers in the area.
right? Within these opportunities, um, by the way, I've talked here about an offering memorandum, which is a broker's opinion of opportunities uh, that can be had. And normally they, uh, the broker will pro provide the uh, trailing uh, 12 months of income and expenses in a rent roll. But we don't need an offering memorandum. Sometimes you're going to run across a property and uh, interact directly with the, uh, uh, with the owner. So essential items that are needed right from, from the broker or the owner is the uh, T12 p &L, trailing 12 months of income and expenses and the rent roll. So within the, within the T12, what we wanna do is look for ways to optimize expenses and increase revenues. Right, for example, can you charge for parking spaces? Are utilities currently being charged to the tenants? Is it common for comparables in the area for tenants to pay for their utilities? A lot of times the, uh, um, the broker's offering memorandum may have this in there. Are late fees currently being charged to tenants? Can the expenses be optimized, which means to be reduced? Okay, now within the rent roll, we are looking for unit type, size, the number of units, the actual rent and occupancy, right? We need to look for opportunities to increase rent to see if it's under market average, right? Another question to ask is, are there opportunities for forced appreciation to repositioning of the units, right? Repositioning of the units basically means to rehab the units to increase the rent, which is called forced appreciation. For example, if you buy a single family house under market, market once you rehab it you should be able to increase the rent and you increase the value for that property and if you sell it sell it for a higher price than from what you bought it for the same thing applies to this now we go into the co-star comps report which validates or invalidates a broker's offering memorandum sort of like validating a realtor's asking price and comparables by checking the mls <clears throat> Just like you analyze a single family property, we need to do the same thing for this project property, which brings us to the next slide. All right, this is a quick analysis or what we call a back of napkin analysis. This is quick and dirty, maybe spend, you know, five, 10 minutes doing this analysis. So before you go on site, this quick analysis needs to be done to determine if it's worth an on-site visit and going through the next steps. Generally, 52% of the gross income, which is also referred to as a total income or gross, or gross revenues, are expenses for stabilized properties, right? If this is not a stabilized property, then we need to go through the whole evaluation process and skip this process. But if it is a stabilized process, let's keep going. So we end up getting this information, right, the, um, the gross income from the offering memorandum or directly from the seller within the uh, T12, the trailing 12 months of income and expenses. This is only for properties that are not all bills paid. If it is an all bills paid property, then use 58 of the expenses of the total income. 48% of the gross income gives you the uh, net operating income, also referred to as DNOI. So you times the gross income times 48%, which gives you the NOI. For example, if the gross income is a million dollars and you times it times 48%, you get $480,000. Next, we need to obtain the cap rate to figure out the value of the property. You can obtain the cap rate from CoStar reports or from a broker if the data is available. You can also obtain the data by comparing the nearby apartments physically, but more than likely at this point in the process, you probably will not do that unless the apartment complex is local and you know the area very well. So now that we have the NOI and the cap rate, we can figure out the value of the property. The value of the property is the NOI divided by the cap rate. If the NOI is $480,000 and the cap rate is 10%, the value of the property is $4.8 million. 
the seller's asking price is below this value. I'm sorry, is above this value. If the seller's asking price is above this value, then no, for, then take no further action. Go to the next opportunity. But if it's below this this value, or the same as this value, then we can move to the next step of the evaluation process, which is an on-site visit. So this is an on-site visit overview, right? First off, we're gonna visit the property unaccompanied by the broker or anybody associated with the apartment complex knowing that we're there. The second visit, we'll, we'll go on-site, visit with the broker. And after we visit with the broker, we'll go on-site again without the broker so we can view the property uninterrupted. And then the third stage is to visit the comparables. The first on-site visit without the broker, you will want to gather as much information as possible since you're going to be in that neighborhood for a long time if you purchase that property. First off, you need to drive the neighborhood. Information, you'll, you'll need to find out what type of neighborhood that surrounds that apartment complex. And also take note of any positives or negatives such as in, in the area around the apartment complex, such as, is there a lower income demographic compared to the rest of the neighborhood? How close is a property from a school, a public library, or a public park? And also, do the comparables have the same type of neighborhoods? On the first on-site visit without the broker, without anybody knowing, make a casual observations, mainly exterior things. You could also go into the office and ask if there are any vacancies or if you can see a unit. Just don't state your true intentions. Here are some things to look for when walking the property. Are there any deferred maintenance issues that can be identified, such as foundation issues? Also, take note of what the exterior conditions look like. You need to compare the exterior conditions to the comparables. Here's another thing you need to look for. Are the AC units old, and will they need replacing in the new future? Also, we need to look for capital improvement costs, right? Capital improvement costs is what currently needs to be re replaced, repaired, or bought. Here's a few items to look at. The parking lot, roofing, siding, landscaping, fencing, exterior lighting, painting, pool repair, green energy updates, which do they currently have LED lights and low flow toilets? Uh, do the AC units need immediate re immediate replacing? So the next stage is an on-site visit with the broker, which will need to be scheduled. Most of the time, the property manager will accompany the broker and will lead the tour. This is a good time to ask the broker and the property manager questions on issues you see. You can also ask them if an inspection report has ever or an expect, uh, inspection has ever been done and if you could have that report if, if they have a copy of it. Ask a broker and the property manager questions based off the first visit. Again, this is assuming there's a broker involved. If there's no broker involved, you could go directly to the owner. Ask as much detail as possible since you won't get an opportunity like this again. You don't wanna waste the broker's time and you wanna come, up, come across as professional and serious. You don't wanna burn any relationships here. You also want to, at this point, get a complete understanding about the property by the time you leave the complex. For any point that the broker made that differs from your own research, take this opportunity to clarify. For example, if the rental comps the broker provided show you an increase in rents by $200, but your research only shows $100 of potential increase, ask him about it and let him know your findings. This will let them know you've done your research and are serious and are very interested in this property. Write down all the issues with the property and come up with an approximate budget later. Here are some things. This is a continuation of the uh, on-site visit with the broker and some things to look at when walking the property. And we need to look at ways to increase the revenues. Can the units be updated to increase rents? Are there any unused rooms or spaces that can be converted into units or storage rental spaces? Can you charge for parking spots? 
right? There are premium parking spaces such as main walk entryways into apartment complexes and covered parking. <clears throat> Normally there are two spaces per, per unit and you can insure both spaces for the tenant's unit for an extra fee per parking spot per month, right? This is just another way you need to be thinking on how to generate revenue. Also, we need to look for deferred maintenance issues such as found the foundation and roof. You need to think about will the AC will the AC and mechanical need updating in the future? Are there any plumbing, water heaters, or boiler issues? Are there any electrical issues? One thing you could do is check the electrical panel, and if you see a Southern Pacific electrical panel, it'll need to be replaced because it is prone to fire issues. Also, what are the number of un units that will need updating, and how much do the units need to be updated to increase the rents? <coughs> what are the current number of units updated? Take note of what type of updating has been done, so you can you can compare them to the comps when you go visit the comparables. So if you just finished walking the property with the broker and property manager or the prop property owner. You would have been asking questions the whole time and listening to them while walking the property. Now take time to walk the property without the broker, the property manager, or the owner. So you're not distracted by them. You'll probably gain a new perspective after walking it again with your team. You know, have take a second look with your team and talk with your team about your findings. Have a person taking notes and another one taking pictures. Now that you have all this new information and have come up with a new set of questions, ask the broker, go back to the office and get clarity. This will help you establish the rehab budget. Now that you just finished the on-site visit, you will want to go visit the comparables. These are the comparables that you will want to visit. The approximate same year built as the apartment leads you're looking at, the same type of amenities, same type of neighborhood and area around the complex, and similar size units. Here's some data to acquire. You want to see if the comps at the same rent as the apartment you're looking at, or you want, as the apartment you're looking at, you want to see the comps are at the same rent to get a better understanding why the rent is at the same level. You're going to want to also view comps with higher rents to see what the difference is between them. Maybe the uh, higher rental comparables are more updated and have a gated community, whereas yours is not. For the rent data, the street comps is what we need and will use to do our projections. The level of upgrades helps you determine the repositioning cost or the rehab cost for updating the subject's properties unit. Take note of the amenities. For example, do they have washers and dryers or hookups within the apartments? Or is there a laundry room where they go? Normally, um, if uh, an apartment provides uh, washer and dryer connections or the units, they're gonna, they're gonna get a higher rent rate than ones that do not. Also, you need to think, is there a workout room? Is there a gated community? Um, are all bills included with the rent? At this point, you should have all, all the key information that you need. So this is a summary of what, of what was collected and needed to be collected so far. Here are some questions you need to ask yourself at this point. Did you get the rent roll that shows all the current leases on the property? Did you get the trailing 12 months of income and expenses, which shows all the expenses and income for the last 12 months? Did you get the market rents when you visited other properties? You need all the different unit configurations, sizes, whether they are rehabbed or not. And also, you should come out with a way of or an idea of how to increase your potential revenues. You know, are you gonna do this by charging, by increasing rents, by rehabbing it? This information will let us go on to the next phase of the process, which is submitting a letter of intent or an LOI to acquire the property. This will be covered in next week's video by David Teo. And that's it.
All righty. Well, thank you so much, John. That was quite a presentation and a very, very complete, uh, complete overview of the process so far. So we look forward to uh, next week's video. And for all of you guys that uh, are listening out there each week, we produce a video explaining a strategy, a task, a step in investing in commercial multifamily. So welcome again uh, to the Candace Major weekly video blog, and we will see you on the next video. Thank you, everybody.